Hello. This is a walking tour designed to help my friends in Corvallis to walk through beautiful open green spaces from Walnut and 29th Street all the way to Chip Ross Park without having to encounter many pedestrians during the time of COVID. This is a walk that I use to prepare myself for the Camino de Santiago. I want you to notice how lovely and, uh, and comfortable people are with making space for one another. They, they will go into the bike lane without asking and yet they are friendly. Hello. I, I was waved at by a pedestrian and uh, I strongly recommend this walk to prepare for the Camino de Santiago in Corvallis so that when this ends, people from Corvallis can go to the Camino de Santiago. We are not yet at Walnut in 29th. So you may begin your walking tour anywhere on 29th, just walk north. Walk north and you will come finally to Walnut. And that is where we will begin. I, I too have to walk to the spot where we will begin. It would seem that I have already begun, but I haven't. I am walking to where we will begin. Good social distancers in Corvallis will use the bike lane as they are passing other pedestrians. It is very good here. My own dog must stop to smell and urinate in many different places. I recommend that you bring your dog with you on such walks because it is a long walk. I do not know how many kilometers is the walk, but you should give yourself about three hours to complete the walk in Corvallis that I'm about to take you on. Of course, we will be at Chipras Park much sooner than three hours, of course, but this is leaving time to walk back to wherever you have started and also to enter Chipras Park and walk around there. For our purposes today, we're just learning how to walk through green spaces to Chipras Park instead of taking 29th to Chipras, which is what most people do. But I have, during the quarantine, found a perhaps not necessarily secret methods of getting there, but certainly it was new to me and might well be new to you. Okay, this is Walnut and 29th Street. This is where we begin. We will continue walking north on 29th Street from here. We are all together and remember, we are safest when together. We are only 50 meters north now and I want to draw your attention to a small walking path that you can see to the left of the condominiums and that path is worth exploring as long as you are willing to make a left across a small creek. None of that area is marked very well. It is exceptional hiking but it does not take you to where I am taking you but I do encourage it on another day when you have time to explore that area. Despite that, I have never been able to explore it exactly the same way twice because uh, to, I'm following deer trails when I am up there. We are still walking north towards Timber Hill Athletic Club. I believe that we will pass the Timber Hill Tennis Club and in between the Timber Hill Tennis Club, my dog is still has to smell and sniff everything. Uh, in between the Timber Hill Tennis Club and the Athletic Club, the, we will make a right turn on a clearly identifiable paved walking path. And that will be the beginning of our walk in much the same way that we began at 29th and Walnut, except that it will be more beginning. You see, this is what the Camino teaches us, that we are always beginning. This is it. This is the pass where we are walking north on 29. We will make a right turn 
and you can see the pass behind me so that you can see me and the pass and I've backed up and I'm walking down the pass of course there's a person and I have to put my mask back up because we are in the time of COVID but this walking tour should work even after COVID unless COVID is much worse than I think it is this is the path uh, I am standing at the part of the path near the swimming pool that the Timber Hill Athletic Club I believe is wisely getting rid of after the death of a poor child several summers ago it was quite tragic even this paved part of path offers of many vistas that are quite beautiful you can see the dense forested Oregon tree area right here I love Oregon it has been very welcoming to me and there are many blossoming trees at this time of year during the time of COVID so do hope that you are in the time of COVID as you are taking your tour and that it is sunny because I have also learned that in Oregon it is very often and rainy as rainy as any part of the black forest uh, but uh, there are no black forests in Oregon as far as I have learned in my time here we have now progressed off of the paved trail and we are getting into these open and green spaces that are behind the Timber Hill Athletic Club they are incredibly beautiful and there are no people here. This is the path that we are following. It goes to a dirt trail, a gravel, gravel trail. And then there, do not just don't take any turns until I tell you stay on this path. There was a little turn trail right there. Don't do it. Follow me onto this probably fake wood, probably the recycled kind of plastic plastic wood trails that came out in the 90s before we had an enzyme that dissolved all of the plastics into beautiful flowers but but we are on the old kind now we will one day dissolve this into more beautiful flowers but look we don't need those beautiful flowers because we have so many yellow lovely flowers please leave in the comments below what are these yellow lovely flowers I love them. This is a beautiful walk and it is very peaceful. I will get you all the way to Chip Ross and you will be surprised and amazed perhaps. Listen, I cannot forever keep updating. It is a long walk and I will run out of battery. So just trust me, keep going forward. This is what the path looked like here. I forget what it looked like up ahead, but it is the same path. You just follow it. It is essentially this path. I've already gotten you to Chip Ross with very few turns almost none so there's a big important left hand turner you go into a Christian camp which is very strange but if you miss that and you end up in a Christian camp where they say uh, potentate of the universe and that was a very strange day I've taken oh we are coming up on a sad memorial bench you must stop and you must say Betty Harrington Griffiths we are glad that you have 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 been remembered so kindly with the bench it was not all that long ago that I myself walked the Camino de Santiago and I after that there's my dog it pulls me backwards you see he's a very tough dog he pulls me right backwards but it was not long after I got back I don't know maybe a few months some topic of what is the most happy you have ever been in your life came up and I, I very stupidly and impulsively said while I was walking the Camino de Santiago and of course my two children and my lovely wife who did not come with me on the Camino de Santiago uh, she was uh, appalled and uh, of course looking back I recognized that perhaps I spoke too flippantly however there is a part of me that never knew such freedom as the Camino de Santiago and I strongly strongly recommend to you that you take it now listen the trail you are on will start to make a hard left turn i got to turn this camera around listen this is the hard left turns it's a trail the big white gravel trail that you are on it will make a big left turn don't take it take this turn that is slightly off to the right if you are perfectly aligned with the trail going forward then this uh little trail is about one 
one ten, one one o'clock, whatever. We will round it to one. Perhaps it is two. It is somewhere like one and two. And as you can see, it is a tighter little trail. But I have promised to guide you to Chipras Park through beautiful green spaces and not the wide gravelly green spaces, you know. This is incredible. This is the kind of place where some unlucky person who is very unlucky could get eaten by a cougar. Uh, I have my cougar spray with me to discourage any. And of course, I am naturally a loud person. But despite that, I do look very tasty, I think, to a cougar, as I am very fat. And I believe that a cougar might look at me and go, mmm, that is a very yummy, yummy fat human. But still, I fight my fear, and I bring my dog, and I think, well, surely the cougar will eat the dog before me. All oh, great fans of Lord of the Rings, if you are watching, we are. We are deep in it, and you are still on that, we will call it the two o'clock trail. The trail that sort of pushed off toward two, and we are walking through farms, and yes, there are some very over-cautious folks who will go, oh no, and then they will be crying. Oh, there's such poison oak, such poison oak. But you, of course, will be a reasonable person, and you will see that it's a very big trail. People are walking on this all the time, so, Unless you are highly hypersensitive to uh, poison oak, it is okay, I am wearing shorts. I have walked this trail many times now, never been eaten by a cougar, nor have I contacted the, uh, the poison oak, despite that it is everywhere. Oh, here's many trails. Do not take the hard trail to, to the right here. That trail is at about four o'clock, and there's a trail at about 10, or 11 o'clock, do not take that trail. You want another two o'clock trail. This is the literal continuation of the two o'clock trail, but it is an actual second two o'clock trail. You have taken two two o'clock trails now. I am not a professional maker of walking tours. I am worried now that my joke about letting the cougar eat my dog has made me seem despicable. Do not hate me, it is a joke. There are no cougars to come and eat us. And um, probably I am thought despicable because I did one time, regrettably, say that the time that I was the most peaceful, at least in the, I'm old. I am 54 years old and knowing moments of peace and alive becomes increasingly rare as you are older and you have responsibilities. And so the peacefulness of the Camino de Santiago, it does settle in on you and you, you are free for the first time. If you can, by, by any means necessary, set yourself up such that you are in Saint Jean uh, de Pierre uh, and you are ready to walk the French. Uh, these are names of trails, whatever. Look up on the internet about this Camino I am talking about, but I, I promise you, it is, it is as indescribably beautiful as this forested area behind me. Of course, it is more beautiful because you get to do it every single day until you are finished. Day after day, you will walk and you will meet people and they will say things to you like, Buen Camino! And you will fall in with your countrymen when you see them, but mostly you will be surrounded by people who are not from your country. And that is the most beautiful, beautiful thing because of course, your countrymen are very likely Americans. And as you and I will both admit probably, the Americans are not doing so well right now. For those of you who are listening only for specific actual real world instructions about getting to Chipras, we are still on the same trail. It is at a bit of an incline and today it is muddy but I'm sure it is not muddy all the time. I slipped and um, uh, did just the two turns that went two o'clock. Um, you have to know those cardinal clock directions on those old fashioned clocks to understand this. So you may want to look that up on the internet. Like what does old man mean when he says, go turn at two o'clock or direct yourself toward two o'clock. I do not know what they are teaching anymore. I am every day confounded by 
things that I read young people saying on the internet. I have to concentrate now. It has gotten quite muddy. But on your day, who knows how muddy it will be. Mine, a little muddy, but of course, we are just beginning. I can hear owls now and a trickling brook. Maybe you can hear it too. It is fantastically beautiful here with tall trees. Douglas firs are they? They climb, they are old. They are not old growth. They are very big and if you want to dispel your trip through the green, you can make out that it is brighter across the forest on the other side of the creek there behind me now. You can make out there's more sunlight there. This is not the dense dark forest, but we are in forest and you can fool yourself that it goes on and on forever. But this trail in front of us here, what does it matter that we are right at the edge of a forest? We are in a forest, that is for sure. And I have not turned since the second, second slight veering at the two o'clock. Now, that particular area was difficult as there were three options for us to turn and we, we took the middle one, we took the middle road. Sorry, we took the road more traveled in that case. As you know, it was not a road, it was just a little trail. A little forest trail that we took, we took the middle one. And to be clear, there have been no other turnings. We are essentially on that same, same little trail right now. It is muddy and there's the dog. We are perfectly safe. We will have to navigate around a fallen tree. There's a woodpecker, if you listen. It is beautiful. We are on our way to Chipras Park, people of Corvallis, do not forget. And for those of you following this because you are visitors to Corvallis looking for something fantastic to do, well, do it. After the fallen tree, which is behind me, there's a rise here and it is pretty much, I think, the last rise before you come to the next part of our journey. We have not turned since I told you when we turned, okay? Stay with me. To be clear about this training piece for the Camino de Santiago, this walk, unless you do all of the trails at Chipras on the same day, you will, when you get to the Camino de Santiago, be walking 27 or 30 miles, uh, 30 kilometers a day. Uh, this is roughly somewhere between 14 miles and 20. So, so we will not do that today. We are, look at me, I am so out of shape. And, so I will not do that today, but I tell you, I was out of shape when I started the Camino de Santiago and I just put one foot in front of the other and one day I passed a man who had had a stroke and pausing, I said, Buen Camino, which is what everyone says to everyone else on the Camino. Because on the Camino, we are all on the Camino. We are all a member of humanity. And it is the only place, truly not the Unitarian Universalists or what other hippie religion thing you might come upon. This was, yes, of course, the Camino de Santiago is, of course, a pilgrimage to the Cathedral, St. James and Santiago. And, of course, much of it is very, very attractive to people of a particular denomination, but... It is for everyone and it's where everyone in humanity becomes a part with everyone else of humanity. It is, well, as I said, regrettably in front of my family. It was where I felt most at peace. It was when I was most happy. And I know that my wife will understand that I am very happy the birth of our children and our many accomplishments big and small, but there's something different about this is another tree that has fallen in the bath, but it has been worn down by clever people. And this part is very, well, I don't want to scare you off by saying it's very muddy. You can see that I traversed it. You should obviously wear hiking boots and uh, be prepared to walk through mud if it has been raining. Everything is common sense. Remember, we are just beginning. Oh, my new friends, look at the sunlight upon me right now. I am out of our time in that little forest there and I am honest to goodness in the backyard of some probably very rich person. But the 
power company and the telephone company have an easement here. We are, there are, I do not know the name. There is no name for this park. Some smart person in Corvallis will go, Oh, you're clearly here. Good. Why don't you tell me where I am? Thank you. But I do not know. All I know is what I need to tell you now. And that is when you see this rich person's backyard. I will show it to you. Yes. It's when you see this person's backyard. Uh, oh, and especially the um, disc golfer. I don't think you can see it. I will try to do that and show it to you. But I, anyway, yeah. So, so you you have you have emerged from the forest into this area. You can obviously make two choices. Do not go into the backyard of the private home because it is their home. But uh, we have two choices here under the easement of the power company and the telephone company or whatever it is. Uh, we can choose to go left or right. If we go right, we will go to the Winko. Okay. You will climb up that hill and then you will go down and up and down and up and down and up and you will get to Winko and you will be home and whatever. You can do whatever you like, but you will not get to Chipras Park. You must go left. So we will go left now. We are going left. We turned left. I'm walking. The dog is still here. There has been no cougar and no poison oak, poison ivy. There's been no poison. There are nothing but beautiful blossoms and rich people. Look at us. We are so lucky to live in Corvallis. If you are quite serious about trading for the Camino de Santiago, you will notice that I have on a small pack. Uh, I am not here to suggest which brand of pack. My brand of pack is very, very good. It was the one that I took with me. You should start your training. Just put in five pounds and start walking some miles. You know, uh, when I, before I went, I didn't train. I did not train to do it. Uh, this time, of course, I will. I think it would be easier if I had have trained, but you don't need to. You can show up and you will be carried by the spirit of the Camino de Santiago. I know you atheists and your molecules and all this science. I understand. I love science. That is, I have a, a mask on. I am, I am social distancing because of the molecular biologists and the virologists and the anesthesiologists. I understand the allergies. God, look at this walk. It's beautiful even when we are not in the forest. But yes, begin adding weight to your pack. Don't take your pack above 15 pounds and don't take more than 15 pounds. Yes, you will be there for weeks. All you need is underwear. Underwear is very important. Maybe two, three pairs. And you will wash them every single day. And you will leave them out. And sometimes they will not dry and you will wear them shamefully on your pack while you are walking along but it is not shamefully because everyone else has that dirty underwear dangling from their packs and everyone is happy for the first time in their lives with their socks and their underwear drying out in the wind while they are walking the pass it is the first time that you will be surrounded by so many happy people people who are for the first time in their lives free to pursue their own thoughts and of course, they appreciate the intermittent interruption with the brain camino, brain camino, and then the conversations, which are often very beautiful and very touching. People tell you, oh, I'm here because, you know, my girlfriend, she committed suicide. I'm at a turn here. I followed the pass after I turned left. And that is Chipras Park. I could end the video here. Turn left. That's Chipras Park right there. But I won't. I will take us right there and we will read a sign. Yeah, I forgot. I was telling you, there's a dog again. Smell, 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 go the dogs. I know everybody is in love with dogs. I, I am in love with my dog. You will think I am despicable if I do not say that I love being paused every two seconds for the dog to sniff and urinate. Why? <laughs> Can you tell? Can you tell I'm slightly irritated by the dog having to pause every two seconds to sniff and urinate? I do. I like to do all of my sniffing and urinating in a single moment and then be done with it. You know, if I'm going to sniff, I sniff completely, finish that sniffing, done, right? And the rest, start, finish, done. I've not had to pause to urinate and not once. By the way, three hours is an extraordinarily, I do not know how long we've been walking. I never pay attention, you know, and on the Camino, you will not pay attention. That will be part of your journey. You will learn how to let go of time. And this is partly one of the ingredients that leads to, um, 
to such happiness as most people do never know. There are no people here. Um, there's much property owned by likely a Christian sect called Cavalry not far. And I made the mistake once of going through it and I saw signs, well, signs and portents. Let us just say that. Signs and portents that that was not where I need to be. You know, the sky should be the roof of our temple, yes? Right, let us make it the sky. Let us wander around. We are edging near and near Chip Ross and I realize that I will have battery power to finish this little visit. So I will tell you that you will meet dozens of people and they will become your best friends almost immediately. And I know you think that is not possible. That is because you have not yet walked the Camino de Santiago. And I will tell you as I edge up here to the sign that I want to show you that I had no expectations of the Camino de Santiago when I left to walk it. And um, it surpassed any dreamy expectation I might have had, you know. And the purpose of this video is that I want to share that now, you know, because I miss it so much. And I was going to go back this summer of COVID. There are a lot of cars here. This is really the Chip Ross Park and I will have to put my mask up because clearly I am not the only person to come here today, but I may be one of the few that has walked from Walnut and it's not that far. I will go up into the Chip Ross natural area and I will continue walking, but our time together is over because you can walk around Chip Ross by yourself. I just taught you how to get here. It is a beautiful walk. I've told you about the Camino de Santiago. I will make more videos about the Camino and about our beautiful natural area in Covales. But there, there is a sign. We are really here. It is not that bad. Didn't even have to pause. It's, it's like 10 minutes. No, I don't know. I, I'm joking. I don't, I don't, I really, I really don't know. I have no idea. I don't even. There's a mosquito though, so be ready. I guess a mosquito is better than a COVID-y. All right, well, thank you for watching. You thought it was over, didn't you? So did I, but once you enter the park, you will find a hill. Walk up it, and now your heart rate will feel something because you are walking up and up and up. And that is very like the Camino de Santiago. You spend a lot of time on grades like this, on the Camino, and like I say, I did not train, but I would. I, I had a great time. It was my most happy. Uh, I walked with a man named Dermot for two days from Ireland and he was amazing and he walked so fast and he said to me, you can walk quite a good clip then, can't ya? And I really hadn't thought of myself as a good clip walker. I hadn't, but I am. And good Lord, look at it. It's very beautiful. I have passed several people that I have spared you so you do not get the COVID. Oh, here's a couple. There they are. I have to put my mask on. So I can't tell you exactly how I have arrived where I am sitting now. Just down this path that I went. It is not very difficult nor very far from where I entered Chibros Park. Uh, I, I'm pretty certain that the middle of the viewfinder here is trained on exactly where we began, 29th and Walnut. And for all of that, a little walk, uh, it, it is not very far at all. I'm literally looking at where we started, so I don't know how long the little video is, but it's probably more videos than a, a walk of this nature um, deserves. And yet it is uh, so peaceful and it does remind me, especially those those wet, parts uh, they remind me of the Camino de Santiago and uh, all of this reminds me of beautiful Corvallis and of course my dog 
reminds me of a creature that loves to do very little more than sniff at everything. But it is a beautiful, pleasant day.